In Creo Parametric, you can perform a statistical design study. In the previous video, we used the tolerances of this model in order to calculate the standard deviations of those different dimensions using MathCAD. In this video, we're going to create a datum analysis feature to measure the height, which is the critical measurement for this particular part. All right, let me orient you to this model. If I click on the extrude feature and then show the dimensions, you can see that we have a variety of different dimensions, but we do not have a dimension for the height. The height is going to be affected by the other different dimensions in this model. So before I create a measurement for the height, I'm gonna make the model a little user friendly by renaming the dimensions. I'll go to the tools tab. Here we have switch dimensions. And I can see that the dimensions have not been renamed. So I'm gonna take the D5 dimension then left click on it. Here's where you can change the name of the dimension from the dimension tab. I'm going to call that the length and then hit the enter key and it updates in the graphics area. The other critical dimension for this design study is the angle, so I will click on it. Right now it's called D6. That's the name that Creo Parametric automatically assigned it. Hey, let's call that one angle and hit the enter key. So now I have renamed my dimensions. That will help me later on. All right, let me double click on the background of the screen in order to get rid of the display of the dimensions. So again, the critical thing is the measurement of the height of this model. I need to create a datum plane for measuring the height. So let me turn on my datum plane display. And I will then create a datum plane for the height of the spring. Let me click on the plane command. And then I'll pick this surface. And right now it's going through the surface. If I click on the word through, I get a drop down list with a variety of different choices. I want to create a plane that is tangent to the surface. And that's not enough to define the plane. Let me hold down the control key and select the datum plane called top. And right now it's making my new plane normal to the surface, or excuse me, normal to my datum plane called top. I want it to be parallel. So this is the plane that I want to use for the measurement. Once again, let's make the model user friendly by renaming this plane. Let me call it the height plane and hit the enter key and click the OK button. So that's good. Let me turn off the display of a couple planes that I don't need. And so now I need to create a measurement of the height. Let's go to the analysis tab. And then we have our measure command. Let me choose distance. And I'm measuring the distance from this plane. And then I'll hold down the control key and select the datum plane called top. Here we can see the little note on the screen showing the results of the measurement. And this is good. I want to store this as a feature in the model. So let me click on the little icon that looks like an old floppy disk. And we're going to make a feature. Let me call this the height measurement, M-E-A-S, that's good. And if I go to the feature tab, we see that this is going to create a parameter. The name of the parameter is going to be called distance. Hey, let's call that height as well. Just keep everything sensical. So I will click the close button. So now we have our datum analysis feature that measures our critical design requirement, the height of the spring. Let me turn off my datum plane display. We also have the ability to do what's called a sensitivity analysis, which is to figure out how sensitive this particular measurement is to changes in dimensions. If I click on sensitivity analysis, it brings open a dialog box. And here we have a default name. I can call this sensitivity, and I'll call it underscore L for sensitivity to the length. And then for the variable dimension, let me click the selection icon and then pick the extrude feature and then select my dimension called length. And it gives us a value of 
plus or minus 10% of the current value. The initial value is 3.5. That's why we get 3.15 and 3.85. Hey, let me open that up a little bit. Let's call this three and then four. This is way outside the tolerances of the dimension, but that's okay. And now let me use the pick icon to select the different parameters in the model. I only have one datum analysis feature. Uh oh, looks like it's got the name distance in there. That's okay, I can change that later on. And then for the number of steps that I want to calculate within that range, I can increase that number if I want. That's good, let's click the compute button. So here we can see that, yeah, there's a pretty big effect on the height measurement if we change the length of the spring and it's a linear relationship. So there you can see how sensitive the height is to the length. Let's hit the X out of there. And if I want to, I can save this sensitivity analysis. Here we have a message that it was successfully saved. That's good. Let's do another one and I'll call this one the sensitivity underscore A, sensitivity to the angle. And for the dimension, let me pick the angle dimension. Once again, we get plus or minus 10% of the value. Uh, let's just do plus or minus one degree. I'm happy with that. Actually, now let's open it up. Let's do from 20 to 25 degrees. Yeah, it's only five degrees. Let's increase the number of steps. Let's plot the distance measurement. And once again, click compute. So we can see how much of an effect changing the angle has on the value of the height. Over this five degree range, it changes between 2.05 and 2.33 or so. So that way we can use the sensitivity analysis to figure out, again, how the different dimensions affect the measurements of interest. So that's good, let's hit the save button to save that one and then click the close button. So with the sensitivity analysis, we were only able to plot our key measurement, the height against one individual dimension. Since I want to see the response surface of the height to both the length and the angle, well, I'm gonna to have to do something more complicated. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at a multi-objective design study in order to map that response surface for our height measurement. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.